Well, hello again. Welcome from the Future Technologies Conference in Vancouver, Canada. And my next guest is Michael Filimovics, and he works at Simon Fraser University. And Dr. Filimovics handed in a paper on so-called pixel phonics. And pixel phonics is a new way to experience audiovisual media by turning the screen itself into the source of audio and typing sounds, uh, tying sounds to the displayed location of images in the media, which is so-called audiovisual co-location. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Hey, um, this sounds like a revolutionary development for anything presented on the screen, from VR to cinema to home television. Um, how was Pixel Phonics invented? Yeah, so it actually originated as an, as an art idea. I had this idea of, of visualizing some information and then I also wanted to sonify the information. I thought, well, I should maybe place the sounds where the visualizations are. Yeah. And then at some point it occurred to me that it's not just an art project, really. It's a general purpose audiovisual display. And it actually had many applications, ramifications beyond just the art project. Yeah. Uh, so I, I kind of went beyond the artwork idea and then I just started investigating it as a, as a new form of display technology. Yeah. But are you an artist or a, a, text, a, a, a tech man? What yeah. is your... So, so my previous degree was an MFA, so Master of Fine Arts. So actually I did go to art school for kind of like experimental video and sound and yeah. electroacoustic composition. So yeah, I do have this art background and I was exhibiting international uh, new media artists as well as I have an industry background in audiovisual post-production. Yeah, okay, I can. Hey, what is Pixel Phonics primarily intended to achieve? So, so mainly it's to kind of increase the, uh, the presence and immersion effects of audiovisual media. So uh, what we've become used to over like the last hundred years, you know, since the loudspeakers and synchronized sound, mm. is we have the visual information is usually put into the, the screen of some kind, and then the audio information is spatially dislocated through another you know, t a display for speakers or headphones usually, so there's kind of someplace else, right? Yeah. But uh, uh, when... Um, anything makes a sound, the sound of course comes from where that object is. If the cat meows, the meow doesn't come from five feet away next to the couch, it comes from like where that, right? right? So the display basically emulates natural perception more than current technologies. Yeah, yeah, good one. Hey, what, technolog uh, what technological development enabled the development of Pixel Phonics? Uh, mainly I think it's, it's more innovative in, on the software and the production processes side. Mm. The, the hardware aspect is just, it's just transducers and a, a vibrating surface. So on the hardware side, I would say it's, it's in line with, a, with a distributed mode radiator panels and other kinds of audio technologies like that. Uh, but it's more on the, 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 the software's role in the signal distribution to uh, you know, assign you know, de developments like object-based object media and object-based audio yeah. uh, to, to allow more precise control of individual sounds and the metadata to, to allocate the sound spatially. Yeah. Hey, what results can you share with us uh, uh, on the first pilots you did? Yeah, so essentially what I wanted to prove in the, in this, in the, in the, the experiments I've done was, was to show that I have created a, basically a new affordance in media. So it is actually a, something that people can, can detect and perceive and I'd be able, able to kind of quantify and show mm. how that, you know, there, there is more going on for audiovisual correspondences than just synchronization that actually people are perceptually quantifiable and verifiable uh, ways of proving that this is a new affordance that can yeah. be used. Yeah. Hey, what's your role in this process? I'm, I'm the inventor, the, the primary, the PI. So it's, it's, it's my idea, and I, yeah. it's literally, uh, you know, it, the prototype is in my basement, and I cut the pieces for it in my garage. So it's your typical <laughs> like garage basement project. Yeah, nice yeah. one. Hey, and how do you assess the commercial value of Pixel Phonics in, in the future? Yeah, so it has a lot of different, so you have to break that down by, by application area. So I'm going to I'm gonna first try to land the, the technology in uh, video conferencing. So mm -hmm. uh, actually, you know, tying speakers' voices in the, in the video conferencing to where their faces are as opposed to having the audio come from the ceiling overhead or typical video conferencing system. So video conferencing, uh, but I'll, and then I'm going to move into large-scale immersive uh, displays like for, for, for museum exhibitions and then simulation based training yeah. and once you're in simulations then you're with game engines you can do virtual reality arcades so it's going to be a staged process I can't do it all at once yeah. but, but basically uh, it, ha it has many application areas uh, like control room simulations games so I'm going to kind of start with video conferencing yeah cool hey how does the quality of sound um, uh, compare to old-fashioned speakers 
yeah. you have them next to your computer or yeah, yeah there, there are so many different ways of, of making you know audio speaker technology it, it is full quality full spectrum sound hmm. uh, my, my focus so far has been just on achieving the co-location effect and then I haven't really gone into a research path exploring the more like kind of audiophile aspects yeah. of it yeah. but certainly if you look at uh, what are called distributed distributed mode panels uh, that would be a place to look at for getting better kinds of yeah. quality issues hey we're yes. in the middle of Vancouver now how long does it take uh, before we can find your invention in shops here downtown Vancouver <sighs> Oh, it, well, I think it, it could, depending. So this is where, you know, I, I've participated in New Ventures BC's uh, uh, incubator program. I am trying to commercialize technology, and so I'm looking at getting some investment and so on. So it, it, that really depends on when, when I get the investment money. I, I, I yeah. could have, within a year, a, a ready, you know, off-the-shelf video conferencing system for sale. Yeah. So the, the, my plan is to, you know, within a year, at least get, get, get a kind of video conferencing system going. Okay. Clear. What's the biggest uh, challenge in further developing pixel yeah, phones? Money, always. Money, Grant, money. You know, either, there's this, you know, the phrase the valley of death, right? Which is when you're trying to commercialize research. Yeah. You because know, the investors don't fund science projects and the granting agencies don't fund startups. So you're in this mm. kind of limbo space trying to figure out how do I, now I, I move this, this research idea into the marketplace. Yeah. What's your vision? For the future of Pixel Phonics, my yeah, last it's question. It's everywhere. Just like we've gotten used for 100 years to speakers and headphones, and, yeah. I, and my long-term vision is it becomes ubiquitous. It's a ubiquitous display technology. Yeah. Find it all over the place. Looking forward to it. Me too. Thank you for this interview. Thank you. Hey, and when you liked this interview, go to the Future Technologies Conference website and you will find a lot of nice videos. Thank you so much for watching and have a good time.